As for the last session, during the internet, uh, as for the fourth session, during the international experience from Asian Pacific region, I would like to introduce you, Professor Moiba Chan. She's a senior director of UMAP Data Network at IQBIA, managing the UMAP factory, an ETL conversion and maintenance group responsible for all QIs UMAP related projects. She is currently responsible for expanding Odyssey amount into the different Asia regions. She will make this session much fruitful as the chair. Let's give him let's give her a big round of applause.
and also an empty conceptual field can be field in time possible. Um, mapping from um, representative Japanese standard to OSC standard will be in Athena so that everyone can use it. So coexist with global home. Um, based on the approaches, um, <laughs> developing tools that can easily perform ETA using virtual machine. Um, 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 it is an um, example used in Japan. It was built by Brian in a social research in Japanese government. It is named Kakenhi. Um, we think expand this network to make um, Jomopi um, and global home as a test of it. As Odessa Japan, we would like to realize the um, spread of homo in Japan by promoting activities such as translating books, conducting various seminars, promoting implementation with real data. So we are really looking forward to making evidence with global healthcare data together with you. Yes, thank you. Um, from universities uh, and uh, data vendors. 
We had breakout sessions. The first was around developing standard open tools for data quality assessment. The second was around building that platform to really share um, and have open source medical terminology methods. Um, and there is a, a facility that I'll tell you about um, that we've created. And third is around uh, the mapping of data sets to common data models. And what we want to do there is really understand what data is available in Australia and what can be mapped. Um, so this is the uh, first resource that we've been um, able to make available under the TBC collaboration. And this is what we're calling an onto server, um, which is maintained by the CSIRO in Australia. And that will be the repository for all of the mappings um, that become available in Australia um, and a repository for all of the data sources um, that are available. Um, and there's tools there for Australian researchers. Um, this one, for example, shrimp to look at SNOMED CT and specifically Australian um, coding. Of course, we've heard um, about what our friends are doing in Eden and really um, we are striving for a similar um, setup in Australia. Um, we have a federated uh, data set, um, we want to build a community, we want to do education, and we want to provide um, evidence um, for Australian healthcare. So we're going to set up an Australian um, academy, just like Eden, and hopefully um, put on an Asian symposium uh, in 2021. <coughs> Um, as I mentioned, mapping in Australia, we are quite new um, to, to this, but there have been examples of mapping. Uh, UNSW and the University of New South Wales um, have mapped electronic GP records. Um, we've mapped pharmaceutical benefit scheme data, which are medication data in Australia. We are mapping the Department of Veterans Affairs data set, and we have been uh, in communication with state-based hospital data sets to also do their mapping to facilitate data linkage in Australia. Of course, there's challenges, as we know, um, mapping common data models, um, but the OMOP data model is the model that we have decided to move forward with um, as a community in Australia. And the reason really um, is around that issue of data linkage. It's really important in Australia. We have lots of different data sets that need linking. Challenges, of course, in mapping um, this paper um, was published recently and it really shows um, how there are uh, issues that we need to solve uh, in Australia and how we use medicines and how they map to um, common standard models. And we need to have these uh, common data models reflecting our local medicine use. Um, so lastly, what are the opportunities? Um, having this uh, structure with um, policy has really allowed us to collaborate um, between the University of New South Wales and the University of South Australia and we're um, <coughs> trying to do a study around opioid use using two different data sets mapped in two different ways. Um, and we have another uh, large project run uh, looking at the safety of biologic medicines which we'll also be using the platform of Odyssey. That's all. Thank you. Um, next we have Professor Bashu. Um, he is a professor and director of the Center for Computational Biomedicine at the School of Biomedical Informatics at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. Wow, uh, why are your names so long? These names are really long. Um, he is currently in the role of the Odyssey China Chair as well. Uh, he has an extensive knowledge in biomedicine text processing and data mining. His primary research includes natural language processing, text and data mining in healthcare. Thanks, Moni. Um, first, I'd like to thank Dr. Park for inviting me to this fascinating meeting. I actually learned a lot. And I'm actually also very excited to share with you some of our work in uh, Odyssey in China. And uh, we actually started this working group uh, uh, literally in uh, December 2016, uh, which is about three years ago. And at that time, we defined three kind of overall goal for this working group, and now it's a chapter uh, to really hope to promote healthcare observational study in China, and uh, with three goals, to extend and customize the Odyssey data science approach to uh, Chinese clinical data, and trying to enable big data-based uh, investigations on important global healthcare problems, 
and uh, to promote international collaboration and education on the uh, biomicroinformatics. So uh, quickly, we actually have a, a grow into a big community. Uh, I'm the chair of the RC China chapter, and we have formed uh, six different subgroups. Uh, CDM and vocabulary actually is a very large group because a lot of all the data in China is uh, kind of in Chinese vocabulary. And although we are using ICD-10, but they are, have a lot of like a local variants of ICD-10s. And uh, we have to spend a lot of time actually to normalize, clean, and linking those Chinese uh, vocabularies to the uh, standard vocabulary in English. And other working group including data analysis, NLP, ETL software, and specifically we formed a working group on the privacy because uh, 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 Kingo data is kind of so sensitive in China, so we want to make sure we, we use those data securely. And we also have an engagement uh, subgroup. At this time, I think uh, our, we, we have a WeChat group. We have about close to 400 members in the WeChat group. And what we have done so far, uh, like I said, we started 2016 and 2017, 18, 19, we had an annual symposium for each of the year. Uh, 2017, we had in Hangzhou with about 180 participants. Uh, 2018 is in Guangzhou. We are actually in conjunction with another big meeting, so we have a, a more attendance, about 500. And for this year's meeting, which is in Shanghai, and we have about 200, uh, between two to 300 people. And within the past year, thanks to Mui, we have done a lot of, uh, uh, I, I think it's five, but maybe I'm wrong, because <laughs> she has done a lot of work on this uh, uh, Odyssey China hacks and the tutorials we did in major cities like Shanghai, Beijing, Xi'an, Guangzhou, and Huzhou, the most recent ones. And in terms of major uh, deliverables, we, 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 we worked on different methodologies, software, and trying to start some studies. For example, we developed a normalized Chinese clinical drug ontology. Uh, we actually uh, released the RC Chinese vocabulary version 1.0. And we also translate Atlas into Chinese. So we have a Chinese version of Atlas now. And uh, we start doing some uh, 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 building the data network and doing some uh, studies. But it's just a start. I haven't well, worked on large uh, scale study yet. Just give you some example: uh, the drug vocabulary, the NCCD, which is actually following the Rax No model, trying to represent Chinese clinical drugs. And the leading author, Dr. Li Wang, is also here. And. Uh, uh, this is an example show the paper we actually follow the RC uh, treatment power study. We, we worked with one hospital's data, show the patterns on the uh, several chronic diseases. Uh, like I said, it's just a start. This is just using a single hospital's data, and we're looking forward to actually collaborate with the uh, uh, entire Odyssey network, uh, as well as uh, a lot of newly uh, established Asian uh, Odyssey chapters to uh, work on the large-scale uh, studies. I think I'll stop here. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Morning Feng. Uh, he, is an he is currently an assistant professor at the Institute for Science, Data Science at the National University of Singapore, also the senior associate director at the National University Hospital championing the big data analytics effort. He is also an affiliated uh, scientist with the Lab of Computational Psych... Oh, <laughs> too long. Yeah, we can still stop there. They know who I am. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, yeah. Just say that I'm cool. <laughs> You're yes. extremely uh, powerful. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, appreciate that, yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, good, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my Chinese name is Meng Ling. Um, for some reason, my MIT professor keep pronouncing it wrongly as a female name. So I asked them to call me Morning instead. So good evening to all of you from Morning. Uh, as mentioned, I'm from Singapore. I'll just briefly share with you what we have uh, uh, done, uh, or what we have achieved uh, related to all this in, in Singapore today. Um, a quick, quick background on, on myself. Uh, I am a computer scientist. I studied my PhD in machine learning and artificial intelligence about 10 years back, uh, before the era of big data. Uh, it was difficult at the time because we, we basically don't have data at the time 
Uh, still remember that we keep publishing paper over 10 benchmarking data, data sets uh, around the whole world. Uh, I'm really glad that after 10 years, uh, suddenly they start calling us data scientists. And uh, I feel even happier when they say we have the sexiest job in the century. So uh, yeah, it turns out well. Um, so after my PhD, I, I went to MIT Harvard uh, Health Science Technology Institute. It's a joint institute between the Harvard Medicine and MIT uh, School of Engineering. So it was a cool setup where the doctors and engineers are, are forced to sit next to each other and, and collaborate. And, and that's where I learned uh, what's the right way to conduct uh, any clinical or, or healthcare um, AI or machine learning research. It's where you have to force the doctor to sit next to the data scientist. Um, and then uh, after that, I returned to uh, NUS. Uh, as you can see, that I'm affiliated with like almost half of the campus uh, with all these institutes. Um, I'm, yeah, not because I like these titles, because only one of them pay my salary. It's exactly, uh, as I mentioned, that I noticed uh, there are still barriers between institutes, although we are all under the same campus. So to cultivate the collaborations between these institutes, ranging from School of Medicine to School of Computing, rather than forcing them to move out from their office, I move myself to them. Right? I affiliated all myself with all of them, so they see me as one of their own. And it's a lot easier for me to act as a bridge to bridge all these institutes around the campus. Okay, and, and with that, all that said, uh, let me get back to the, the Singapore Odyssey story. Um, actually, it all started in 2017, October, and it started with Prof Park. So uh, it's a true story. So for us, for me, uh, in addition of thanking Prof Park for inviting me to this great event, we have to thank Prof Park and Prof Yun of starting the Odyssey Initiative in Singapore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure Paul Fox still remember. Uh, the picture was a cafe at the uh, Cornac Hotel while I was invited to Seoul to host the data dawn for, uh, for them. We have a coffee together with Paul Park, learn about what Odyssey is about, the, the great community around Asia, and, and uh, the successful stories uh, from our pioneers. So inspi inspired by their success, uh, after coming back to Singapore, I, I managed to convince my PI to switch from I2P2 to, to Odyssey. If you know I2P2, um, I hope no I2P2 folks are around in this room. <laughs> um, and, and it actually took us uh, from, from, from end of 2017, it took us uh, about six months or seven months to uh, sort of finally release the first Odyssey cohort. It was a type 2 diabetes uh, perspective trial cohort, uh, select, uh, specifically selected 5,000 patients from a, a hospital called the Kuti Park uh, Hospital in the north part of Singapore. And, uh, um, and after that, uh, with six more months, we managed to uh, convert another uh, related cohort, also type 2 diabetes cohort, from our own affiliated hospital, the National University Hospital. Uh, this time we have 10,000 patients. And uh, the reason why we want to do that is that we want to demo uh, having a common CDM. It allows us to be able to integrate data across hospitals and allow us to conduct studies across different hospitals and in institutes easily. And again, uh, with the success of this diabetes cohort, uh, uh, I presented to the senior management of uh, our healthcare cluster called the National University Health System. Uh, a big background for you for Singapore healthcare system. We are a tiny island with six million people, and our Ministry of Health cut the island into three parts, the west, the middle, and the east. And NUHS take care of the west, about two million patients, three hospitals, and 20 clinics. So, uh, I, I managed to convince uh, NUHS to also adopt uh, uh, Odysseys as their research uh, platform standard. And as a pilot project, uh, by the end of uh, just now, actually in October, we release our, we have a soft launch of Odysseys and Alerts uh, for, to support all the doctors to explore their research cohorts. And uh, for that uh, soft launch, we managed to convert uh, half a million patient data uh, uh, for the last three years. Uh, and, and just uh, after the soft launch in 1st October until now, we already, uh, the PIs, the clinical PIs already created 120 projects playing around Atlas. So it's been uh, quite active. And uh, moving forward, um, since my school, School of Public Health, is the National uh, School of Public Health, we have direct access to the Minister of Health. We do see that if we are managed to successfully uh, scale the whole uh, Odysseys platform across the whole NUHS community, uh, we may be able to convince our ministry to make it a national standard uh, 
So with all that, I think the key message is that great thanks to Paul Park again for starting uh, this wonderful pathway for us. And the last slide, uh, probably the most important one. Um, so for me to come to this event, besides the learning from all the great pioneers, is uh, to look for collaborators uh, and expand our collaboration. And uh, the reason why we picked uh, the type 2 diabetes cohort to start with is because it was very relevant to Singapore. Uh, the chart on, on the right hand side, uh, it was a simulation model built, built by us. Uh, we simulated that uh, if the government don't do anything, uh, by two, 2050, one quarter of Singaporeans will have type 2 diabetes. Of course, that freaked freak them out. So our prime minister actually declared a war, not against another country, but against type 2 diabetes. So uh, diabetes is really relevant to Singapore. And for our data, as I mentioned, we have uh, 15,000 patients from two hospitals. Uh, continuous follow-up since 2016. We have all their clinical data. We have survey data to learn about their social behaviors, their backgrounds, and even all their omics data uh, ranging from genomics, pronomics, and, and lipidomics. So if anyone interested uh, working on this cohort, uh, please uh, email me or just stop me later with some whiskey. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Thank you. Now last, I do want to introduce uh, Dr. Um, Sing Chang Yu, although he's not going to talk about um, Korea since we've been learning the whole day about what's been going on with Korea, but he is up here as a panelist. Um, he is a medical doctor who is majoring in inter internal medicine. Currently, he is a PhD candidate at the Department of Bi uh, Biomedical Informatics at Aju University. In 2016, he joined Odyssey, the com our community and started research within the network. He received the best community uh, contribution award uh, for clinical evidence generation at the 2017 Odyssey Symposium um, by comparative research of anti-hypertensive treatment in real world setting. In 2018, he released the clinical okay, informing well, thank package you. based on recurrent. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I'm just reading cool. off a script. I want to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a really cool guy. Okay, that's what I'm told, supposed to say. Now, given all that, we do have a, uh, a very full panel up here of folks from uh, different countries within Asia. And you kind of heard a little bit about their experience uh, in forming Odyssey and OMOP. So I do want to ask you guys a few more in-depth questions, starting with what are some of the challenges that you guys face when you're trying to convert your data into OMOP? Because like earlier this morning, we heard questions like, well, when you convert your data, how do you compare the CDW to the CDM, right? How do you, how do you deal with some of those challenges within your own countries or even within your own universities, trying to get people to believe and uh, dealing with answering questions like that? How about we start with uh, Professor Xu Hua? Oh, Professor um, Azumi? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I think, um, especially in Japanese, uh, most big problem um, and the uh, most big challenge for uh, um, OMOP CDM is a vocabulary. Um, of course, um, in domestic use, um, we have a Japanese original code, especially drug and um, execute procedure. Uh, and almost hospital in Japan have a local original code. So we have to mapping to a standard code, and uh, we have to um, make making um, global standard um, OMOP CDM mapping table. And uh, another, uh, another challenge is uh, low accessibility for healthcare data in Japan. Um, we we uh, mainly use uh, claim and billing data only. Um, EMR data is, uh, um, every hospital have a various HIS and uh, interfaces by hospital. So um, it is very difficult to execute um, ETA to common data model. So uh, we and uh, Professor Hiramats made ETA2, and we would like to um, update ETA2 for uh, easy to convert. Thank you.
thought is uh, the challenges actually come from both uh, technical side and the non-technical sides. On the technical aspects, uh, just like uh, oh, we already talked about, uh, it's more on the like uh, vocabulary, CDM, ETL, all those things, especially when you move to a new language. Uh, uh, a lot of things have to build from the, uh, the actual data in individual countries. But the non-technical side is also, it's more about how to engage the, the, the community, I think. Especially in China, it's so complex. I mean, there's uh, so many different organizations because big data in healthcare is so hard now. A lot of different organizations actually all want to get into this field and uh, there's actually different standards, different uh, uh, methodology has been introduced. How can we convince people to buy in Odyssey is the, the most uh, right way to do this, so it needs efforts. Thanks. Um, I think one of the main challenges we have had in Australia is really our health system and how different it seems to feel to lots of other um, systems and making the, the data actually fit into the common data model is quite challenging. Um, for example, uh, in Australia, we can see any a general practice um, physician that we like. We don't we don't have a home doctor or a home uh, practice, so that that has been quite challenging in in the um, the translation. I also touched on a couple of the other challenges, um, like the way we use medicines. It's quite different in Australia. We have different indications than you would normally um, get, and we actually translate those. Um, into different codes, into different ATC codes. Um, for some reason, the government does that. So it's been quite challenging to, to link um, some of those you know, nuances in the way we use medicines and the way we actually deliver healthcare in Australia and have that fit into the um, CDM. So we're still in the process, um, but we're making headway um, with that. Oh, okay. So, so for Singapore, uh, the conversion to Odysseys has been perfectly smooth and we have faced no challenge at all. Of course, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we, we face the, the, the same challenges uh, as, as our colleagues here. But I will say that uh, Singapore is quite young in, in terms of the path to, to Odysseys, which is a good thing for us uh, so that we can learn from all, all our pioneers. And also, uh, we are lucky that all our EMRs in, is, is it was in English, so we don't have to recreate the CDM uh, to, to other language. Uh, but technical challenge-wise, we, we do have a couple that uh, uh, we have been actively seeking for solution. The, the first one is, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of data nowadays are coupled with omics data. Like for our hospital, uh, our, our CEO actually invested 100 million have a vision that uh, next time in future, uh, every patient that works in our hospital we collect their blood and then we sequence them. Um, so the, for the current Odysseys uh, or the CDM, uh, the support for omics data seems to be uh, uh, quite limited and, and we, we, we are voicing out to our leaders in Odysseys. We hope that in future, uh, more supports and more tools and the CDM can be expanded to cover uh, omics data as well. Uh, another challenge that we face is uh, uh, in Singapore because of piracy, uh, all the timestamps, all the dates are considered personal information. So we have to actually de-identify these dates and ship them randomly to some random future. So you can't tell exactly when they were admitted to the hospital. While using Atlas, the, the, the beautiful UI, which was very useful, uh, but then now we face a problem that because a lot of time the clinical PI would like to create a cohort for patients from 2016 to 2019, for example, but they have no way to do it now because all the dates are scrambled. So I'm not sure has anyone figured out any brilliant way to yet de-identify all the dates, yet allow the PIs to still able to on a yearly, not a detailed uh, uh, date level, still create cohorts around that. So thanks. I think the biggest challenge uh, of Odyssey in Korea actually is the language because we, you know, uh, Korean is very hard uh, for Korean. It's very hard to speak and write uh, and read the English. It's really painful for me. So, so that's why we just opened the uh, Odyssey Korean chapter in the forum. So we opened the uh, Korean forum. So and then we can discuss in, in Korean and we made a, a Odyssey. Korea GitHub, so we can share our issues, our, our you know, tutorials uh, in Korean too. 
And uh, like like other countries, we do have the issues for vocabulary mapping system, and we've done a lot of work on it, and we are trying to, now we are trying to unload the EDI code into AMOP city, uh, AMOP vocabulary system, so uh, we can, uh, it will be the huge uh, infrastructure for the official mapping system uh, in North Korea. And another challenge, I, I, I as I addressed uh, in the previous uh, session, that it's not easy to uh, easy for a uh, database, a uh, small database, to participate uh, current artist studies, and we are now working on. So, we been uh, we have several challenges, but we are working on uh, to overcome these challenges. And still, there are many challenges we do have. And, and as you know, that this is not static uh, model. We are evolving now, and we'll, we recognize current challenges in our society in our uh, community and we are trying to you know, overcome these challenges. Okay, um, given that you know, I, uh, in this panel there are a lot of uh, new Odyssey chapters that have been formed, right? Singapore and Japan just recently, literally within the last two months. So how do you guys um, see pushing more communication and community awareness and more participation for folks in Odyssey. I mean, in China and, and I mean, in Korea, look at the number of people that have shown up here, right? So Korean, the Korean team and chapter seem have to do a very good job at getting the awareness out there. In a resort, you get 350 people show up. That's outstanding. Um, but with the newer chapters, Dr. You know, you, is there something you can help the, the newer chapters, uh, how they can push Odyssey within their different chapters? Yes, uh, I'm not sure I can do that, but, but we can do that, I think, uh, together we can do that. You know, uh, you, you did in China, we just push Chinese to, you know, uh, uh, engage these groups uh, together, like for years, not, it, it's not for on a, on a year, it's, it takes years to, you know, uh, people to engage to this community. So we have to work together as a community. And uh, yes, I'm here for you. I can talk a little bit about this too. Actually, I think Mui is the best person answering this question. <laughs> <laughs> He's really behind all of us, uh, really thanks to her. So I, I think uh, one idea we're talking about is uh, uh, forming uh, like an Odyssey Asian Pacific uh, Symposium. And we're just talking about uh, having the first Asian uh, Pacific Symposium uh, in Shanghai next year. And around the same time, around this time, I think, at the end of November, beginning of December, haven't decided the final dates yet. But I think that will pro provide a great platform for all of us working on Odyssey together from different Asian Pacific countries. And uh, that actually might be the right time to talk about all those collaborative studies with ideas we have together with all the Odyssey leaders from the world. So I think uh, we, we definitely need the help from the Odyssey leaders as well as the collaboration from different uh, countries here. Thanks. So, uh, yeah, um, can I repeat this in, in Korean? So it's very uh, important. So, uh, 저희가 내년 네, 그 중국 상하이에서 이제 오디시 AP 아시아 퍼시픽 어, 심포지엄을 개최하려고 합니다. 그래서 아마 팀은 어, 당, 그 이제 내년 처음으로 열리는 오시, 아시아 퍼시픽 오디시 심포지엄의 그 메인 주제는 콜라비트리 리서치 어, 협력 연구가 될 것이고 이제 그런 거에 대해서 좀더 논의를 해보도록 하겠습니다. So uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, yesterday, um, I think we can do something like a uh, legend uh, study for diabetes. So we need to replicate legend study on other diseases, and diabetes is a very good, uh, you know, candidate uh, candidate for that. So, as a you know, concrete uh, plan, action plan that we uh, want to suggest that we we have to do legend diabetes. Nicole, um, yeah, I think one of the uh, for us is a new uh, chapter. Um, of Odyssey and, and becoming a chapter of Odyssey. Um, we would like to learn very much from the other chapters um, and how they've collaborated together, the activities um, that they've done. And I think one of the, the key learnings from me with Odyssey is that participation uh, 
is really the way that you get involvement. Um, you know, getting enthusiastic, coming to these meetings and hearing the energy and hearing, uh, you know, the wonderful work that's being done is really something that will take um, our collaboration forward. Uh, I think re-establishing um, the uh, Eastern Hemisphere a teleconference and I would encourage everyone here um, if you are interested in collaborating with Odyssey please join the teleconferences the work group meetings please look at the forum um, all of that you know um, participation will really I think energize our um, communities and our own chapters to be part of the bigger community so just a plug for the, the work group meetings yeah so oh, oh, sorry um, so again uh, of course we, we, we do look forward to uh, the Chinese event uh, next year uh, uh, locally or regionally for Singapore or Southeast Asia uh, we organize uh, medical AI expo and data hackathon every year around July and this year we, we are very actively looking to create a parallel track for, for Odysseys uh, independently which wasn't there last year so again, a shout out to uh, uh, George, uh, Patrick, Peter, Chris, and, and Moy, and Martin. We, I will be boarding all of you <laughs> uh, to help us to, to, to run that. Uh, because as I mentioned, we are new. Uh, uh, not many Singaporeans uh, are educated and informed about Odysseys, uh, including our other, other healthcare clusters and public hospitals. So we would like them to, to be, yeah. Uh, we hope that we can hear from you guys again and let them learn from, from you guys. So just to fill in for Japan, um, one of the working groups that the Japanese team has formed is a community awareness working group. Um, and similar to Korea, uh, they have started a forum in uh, the forums for Japanese so that folks can actually type Japanese in there. And one of the ways that they, we believe to help with the awareness is actually to do more tutorials and to have other folks from other countries come and speak and to show their experience. Like Nicole, you said, right? The enthusiasm comes from other folks that has done it before and they come in and they show how it can be done. So actually on February 17th of 2020, uh, Danny from Oxford University will actually be in Japan to talk about uh, the Eden Project, uh, which you guys heard today from Peter. But Danny will come and talk to the Japanese um, community about how that project is done so that they can learn from it and be able to move to the next step and encourage more folks to want to join that community. So that's on Japan. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about how each individual country is moving forward with their objectives and goals to try to get their countries up and running on Odyssey and OMOP. What do you guys see as the future for collaboration amongst all the different Asian, Asia Pacific company, uh, not companies, countries? Okay, thanks. Um, um, uh, yeah, I see, I see great potential and I think uh, as, as Chan mentioned just now, uh, um, maybe we, we use diabetes as a starting point or any other disease as a starting point. Uh, because I, I feel like uh, everyone is enthusiastic and passionate about it. So we just need a, a yeah, exactly, I'm, I'm just echoing your point. Uh, we just need a concrete problem, a concrete problem statement, a hypothesis, and, and then, uh, then, then the rest, we, we all know what needs to be, to be done, and then we can get our hands dirty to go into uh, all the details in data extractions, data quality controls, and, and, and then we start to learn about each other's data and et cetera, and then hopefully that will lead to uh, some uh, publications or something more impactful. And with that uh, success story, then uh, you will become a very good template to show the rest of Asian Pacific, say, uh, letting them know in, uh, have a tangible uh, outcome that all these collaborations can come to, then they will be easily convinced rather than we keep talking. So that, that will be, be my take on this. Yeah, I pretty much agree with uh, um, what Meling has said. That basically, we participate in each other meeting, having meeting conferences together, or doing study together and publishing together. I think that will really make the collaborative work very solid. Thanks. Yeah, um, I think that Many guidelines, current guidelines, 
uh, it are based on the evidence from the Western countries, not you know Asian countries. And uh, until now, Korea is the only country who actively par participate uh, in the uh, Odyssey studies. So I cannot compare. You know, I can convince that uh, really Asian is different from uh, other countries, other Western countries. Even though we are, uh, our results is uh, are different from the Western countries. So, uh, if we uh, collaborate uh, in the, uh, more Asian countries collaborate, then we can sh uh, see that difference from you know Western people and ours, and uh, we can revise our you know clinical guidelines, and we can you know provide evidences for for our guidelines. I don't really have any more to add to that other than to echo um, that there is a, a lot of uh, information in heterogeneity of effect, um, looking at difference in utilisation of medicines across countries and how they're used and how that impacts on the safety and effectiveness of medicines. I think having different settings really opens up a wealth of information for us to understand um, treatment effects. So I would absolutely echo um, that concept of really trying to look at lots of different data sets to really get a good understanding um, of treatments across the world. I think also to add to that, one of the things that we would like to do starting next year is to bring more, to bring more, how to bring more awareness and collaboration amongst the different Asia Pacific communities is to have more working groups that are Asia specific time because a lot of the working groups currently are on Eastern Standard Time or European Standard Time, and it's kind of hard for the teams to be up at 1 a.m. besides uh, Professor Yu over there, or Dr. Yu over there, who stays up at, until 1.30 to attend meetings. Um, you know, we, if we can have more of them on the Asia Pacific Time, then more folks on uh, this coast can start helping each other and working with each other to get them up to speed quickly uh, and, and educate each other a lot faster than having them try to attend some of the calls that are really late. Um, either that or an example of one that we're working with is the psychiatry working group. Uh, we set it at a time zone that somewhat works for everybody that's not too late uh, or too early for everyone. Um, it's typically at 8, 9 p.m. Korean time, 8, 8, 8 p.m. China time, you know, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it kind of works for everybody. So then we have the entire world in there that they're bringing their solutions and their problems to the table at the same time. So um, with that, I would like to open the uh, floor up to any questions, uh, a couple of questions. We can take a couple of questions with some of these leaders up here. Is there any questions that you guys would like to ask from some of these leaders? 한국어로 질문하셔도 됩니다. Well, thank you everybody for your time and thank you presenters.